Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I have done some more work on the bare metal foil on the 66 Olds 442. Um, I, part one of the uh, this video series, I was the ending of that video. I was starting on the bare metal foil around the doors. Um, I have completed the bare metal foil. A few little touch-ups I need to do, but as far as the bare metal foil, I've got it all done. It was quite a bit on this. These uh, these olds were more of a a uh, luxury sports car, if you want to call it that, or luxury more muscle car. They were loaded with chrome and accessories, and uh, so I had to I had quite a bit of chrome chrome work to do around the tail lights there, as you can see, the uh, around the trunk, around all the, the all this trim, some some of the uh, this little deal right here, whatever it is, some sort of vent. I've got to do some touch-up painting on that. But all the windows, got the engine compartment blacked out. Um, door handles on it, or painted. Actually, I didn't bare metal foil them. Um, I painted them, but also I've got the headliner installed. How do you like that? Um, and with that, the next step is to install the windows. So that's what I'm about to do. Um, real fast, by way of introduction, if you haven't already, guys, subscribe to my channel. I'd appreciate it if you go over and do so. That would help me out greatly if you would subscribe and like this, this video and share it with a friend and whatever else you can do. I don't know what they can, what else they'll allow you to do. But guys, I'm so thankful for the subscribers that I have and you guys commenting on all the videos and, um, yeah, it's just it's just so much fun. Thank you so much for that. But anyway, I'm going to reposition the camera and we're going to install some windows. So give me just a second and I'll get right back. All right, here we go. So <clears throat> I'll be using Mod Podge. I think this will work out on this kit. The uh, the last car I did, I had to use my uh, my testers uh, clear clear part cement because it's much thinner um, I test fit these windows the front one goes in pretty pretty a uh, solid so I'll be able to use the thicker Mod Podge always test fit or dry fit your windows you never want to install your windows with glue before ever dry fitting them because what if you have a fit problem then you take it out and the possibility of getting fingerprints and things like that are very high so clean your window first because you may not have the opportunity after you uh, make the chassis up with a body to be able to clean the inside so this one has nice little holes like fit fitting holes or uh, alignment holes so we'll line those up and I've already test fit this so it fit in nice and snug So get it in and then you want to because your dashboard is going to come right up against this you want to make sure that this thing is fitting properly you don't want it to be down too far and then when you fit your your uh, your chassis and tub up against it it's going to to hit so make sure everything is exactly where it needs to be and fitting correctly don't really like how these windows look to be perfectly honest with you but what you gonna do yeah they don't fit that great as far as around the edge here they seem to be well, maybe you can't see it so much on camera I can see it a lot better with my with my eyes so all right so now I'm gonna take some of this Mod Podge very thick Mod Podge See, this stuff is like ultra thick Elmer's glue. And I'm going to use this toothpick here. I'm going to put it around where I want it's going to, it's going to dry clear. Maybe I need to use a, a uh, I've got some of these pointed Q tips. That might be better. So, yeah, this stuff dries, dries clear. So, even if you got it on your uh, window in a, in a wrong place chances are you won't see that that's going to dry perfectly clear 
I don't know what I should use. I've, some of you guys use these little, you know what, I've got a few of those. I've got some of these little teeny tiny brushes. I'm new to the Mod Podge. I, uh, I don't use it very often, or haven't had it very long to use it very often. Okay, I'm going to try one of these. These little guys here. Some teeny little brush like you would use for your super glue or something. We'll try that. Yeah, and maybe that's what I needed. So I'm gluing the head. I don't know why sometimes they put these sun visors in the kits because you can't see them. I'll cut them off sometime. But they'll put sun visors in there clear, so you'd have to paint it anyway. But anyway, just get him glued in there. You don't want the window to come out once you put it on the shelf. So what's your favorite window glue? Is it Mod Podge or is it regular glue, which I have ruined uh, who knows how many windows with the regular model cement? They didn't have, to the best, best of my knowledge, when I was a kid, they didn't have clear part cement. They had, you know, you could probably, people were probably using Elmer's glue or something like that. But I didn't, I didn't know any better as a kid. And I would just use the model cement glue in the tube, you know, little red tube. Well, as a kid, you're impatient. I'm, a, I'm an, as an adult, I'm impatient, but as a kid, it, um, I would uh I would usually get a big huge fingerprint on it. All right, on the back glass, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of this this on. I'm hesitant of putting the glue on first because sometimes you get your window in there and it's not exactly where it needs to be. And there you go, you've got glue all over it when it slid. But I'm going to take my chances on this one. Go ahead and get plenty of glue on there. And it is transparent when it dries. Now you wouldn't want to put a heaping glob on there. You probably would be able to see it if it even if it was transparent. But let's just get it on there. But the window is going to stick. All right. Now, sometimes your windows also have contour to them. Like this is just one little flat piece. I say flat. When I look at it, it appears to have some bit of contour. So it would go like this. This would be the, okay. All right, now I'm gonna try to do this without getting glue on it. So I'm gonna reach through, be able to grab my window with my fingers like that and try to get it in there first try just like that okay nicely done Matthew nice job all right so in this Mod Podge I need to clean this window these don't forget to clean your windows if you do install them and you get fingerprints all over them clean them up before you you um, button the, the kit up this Mod Podge is is more tacky so the windows will go ahead and stick now what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take this and i'm going to put it in my egg incubator so it would accelerate the time the drying time on this mod podge and i'm going to work on the exhaust of the chassis so stand by and we'll get uh we'll get changed out all right so now let's do some exhaust work so I've already got the engine installed. Um, it looks, it look, actually looks pretty decent. But anyway, got the interior in, gotta, gotta do the exhaust. So turn them over. And the way I've done this is, I like to, this one's a little different because this is a two piece chassis. This has your chassis and then it goes onto your, your uh, bottom portion of the chassis, which also is your interior. But to be able to paint your axle assembly and all these things together um, without the exhaust, because the exhaust goes under the axle, I always glue, I always put everything in place and glue everything together except for the points that glue it to the chassis. That way then I can pull the, 
pull the axle out it's got all it's got everything already attached so then I can you know finish detailing that and it's going to be painted and then I can uh, it, it, um, install the exhaust and that's what I'm about to do so I've got my exhaust painted with that epoxy paint or that uh, appliance paint that I like to use so let me pull my chair up here and see if I can get this together without using the instructions. Let's see if I can figure it out. Easy enough, that goes there. I love a nicely detailed exhaust system. I think that makes a makes a model or a rusted out one. You know, if you have a, if you're making a beater and you've got it rusted as long as, you know, some people just spray it black. But uh, I do like to see a nicely detailed exhaust system. Pre-fit this stuff. If you don't pre-fit things, boy, you can really run into some issues. Open up the trusty Bob Smith glue after I clean the top off. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the three points where I'm going to be gluing this exhaust down. I my, I'm bad about squeezing the glue, trying to get it to come out the end, and then all of a sudden a big glob comes out. So I always I make sure I don't do it over the kit or over the model. There's one. And then we'll put this in. I was asking on the last video, part one of this, some of you guys call this accelerator something else, and I couldn't remember what it was, but it was kicker. That's what it was. It came to me. It was kicker. You know, I call this stuff kicker, and I just call it accelerator or something like that. So hold it there for a second. Let the stuff cure, and there you go. Some of you guys also will dip it in those little brushes that I used for the Mod Podge and use it to apply it that way. I'm sure that works great too. Pre-fit this one more time. This is a really nice kit. I've I've enjoyed building this one. The the front windshield, you know, however. They could have, I think, maybe a little bit better on that, but everything else goes. It's a, it's a great, great kit if you can pick this one up. 66 Olds 442. Also, real quick, side note, totally off rabbit or squirrel. This box that goes with it, someone said that they believe that the checkerboard pattern was exclusively for Walmart. Is that true? Was this a Walmart kit only as far as the way the box box is. I don't see anywhere on here it just says Walmart. Um, what about that though guys? Some of you guys are real experts at this stuff. Probably actually know what you're talking about. Where the heck did that hole go? There it is. This bottle is almost empty. I'm see if anything comes out all right give it just a second and there it is all right that's cool and for the pieces here see if I can figure out how they go without looking at the instructions how many of you guys actually follow the instructions when you build a kit I find myself looking at them when there's something I don't very rarely that's not to say I'm really good at this I just it's like a guy on a map you know you know that I know how to get there no I'm not lost honey 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. I know where I'm at. Yeah, that's the same thing with these model kits. Probably is um, struggle, 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 struggle. Mm, I guess I'll look at the instructions. Where are the instructions? You know, kind of like that. All right, this fit good. But yeah, I don't. I don't typically use the instructions like step one, step two, step three. I have my own step system, just much like you guys. We we have our own system that works and that's what that's what we do and i'll put a little glue onto the do this one a little different there and there you guys ever been lost on a trip oh yeah me too Why don't you stop at this gas station and ask someone? No, no, no. Let me drive another hundred miles into the middle of nowhere. Funny story while I'm doing this real quick. Took a trip out to Washington State once. We lived in Tennessee at the time. And, well, it was kind of a just a sightseeing trip, two-week trip me and my four kids and wife and we had gone as far as washington state um, we uh, my wife has an aunt in spokane and so we went to spokane did some uh, sightseeing in idaho and decided when we came back we were just going to go through montana north dakota uh, minnesota and all those beautiful states and come back down through illinois Indiana, Kentucky, back into to uh, into Tennessee. So we left um, Idaho, northeast or yeah, northeastern Idaho. Well, there's not much of a east to north Idaho. It's so small up there. But we left Idaho that morning and drove through Montana. Let me tell you what, Montana is humongous. It took all day to drive through Montana. I don't like to plan or anything like that, so I decided that we would just find a motel, you know, somewhere in North Dakota. We we're taking the interstate. I forget what the what the road was. But anyway, it got late, it got dark, and we we were trying to find a a a hotel in the western or the eastern part of Montana or it may have been the uh, western part of North Dakota and to try and wrap this story up because I'm done with the exhaust we couldn't find one because all the uh, oil frackers or whatever those people whatever kind of drilling they do out there had all the hotels rented there were there was nowhere to stay and let me tell you what in the in up there in North Dakota it truly is the middle of nowhere well we found this little we found this little hotel just as you come into North Dakota. And it was called the Buckboard Inn. Guys, I would die if any of you guys have stayed at the Buckboard Inn. It's the interstate that, like, almost the most northern interstate that goes from east to west in, um, in Montana, or uh, North Dakota, Montana. Dang, this stuff doesn't want to come out. And, uh, so we st we we went up there, and uh, I won't I won't go I won't get too politically incorrect, but th there were some funny things that we experienced at the buckboard. It was very very um, primitive, as far as um, they actually had keys for the doors rather than cards. I'm going to go ahead and install this rear axle. They had keys. The person behind the desk when I walked in that night, it was about midnight. I was just thrilled that we found somewhere. Um, she looked. I think it was a she. Not 100% on that, but anyway, it looked at me and um, didn't even ask, didn't say, hey, how you doing? Ask, you know. It was like the most awkward feeling, this little weird desk that they were sitting at. And I said, um, do you have a room? And it said, yes, I think, because we did get a room. But uh, yeah, it was it was very very weird. The little, but it was I don't remember the town, I don't remember any of that. What the details of any of those things? 
I just remember it was called the Buck Board Inn. And it was the most awkward time that we ever spent as a family. And do you see how I just did that all in one assembly? Actually, this shock didn't go in. There we go. Um, but yeah, it was a it was it was a memorable uh, that those 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 are the memories that the kids remember. The buckboard in, and uh, we didn't hear gunshots or anything, but we we. It was it was rather interesting. It was in the middle of nowhere. Anyway, story over. It was it was it was funny. It was scary. It was all those things wrapped up in in a in a trip. But I've almost got this chassis together. But yeah, if if any of you guys were like, hey, I I stayed at the Buckboard Inn before. I I would die because it, it was so so weird. All right, that is together. I'll let that accelerator, accelerator or kicker dry. That kicker or accelerator will break down the paint if you rub it. So always just let that stuff dry before you start to mess with it. But that looks really nice. That's gonna look really, really good. So the next step now is to get some other parts together. I'm going to now though, I've got these nice looking wheels uh, black washed. I'm going to take my tires and we're going to sand them up and give them a little bit of a used look. So stand by. All right, so here's my little tool I built to scuff my tires. It is two of the, uh, at Hobby Lobby there are, they sell these like unfinished wood, um, parts these are door or uh, knobs for like a cabinet i drilled them all the way through they did have i think one hole in the end it didn't go all the way through or something like that but anyway i drilled them all the way through so they're tapered this grid back here guys really robs the focus of my camera i've noticed so they're tapered so they work perfect for when you put them up against if i can block the darn grid when you put them up against your tire so i have two of them one or and it's on a in, on a little screw or a bolt, Phillips head. So put one to tire to the other and you kind of twist it and it centers it right up. These are some really cool tires too, by the way. They're really, really biased ply looking tires. I'll get the focus in just a second. So just tighten it up and those cool looking bias plies. Put it in the drill. Just don't tighten it too tight in the drill or else you're going to ruin your threads and you may not ever get that nut off. Then you uh, take your file. Hold on, let me, let me lay these instructions down here. Maybe it'll quit trying to focus so much. All right, so here we go. Yeah, that didn't help at all with the focus. This is a new camera that I'm working with. And darn if it doesn't just absolutely not want to focus. Maybe if I go down farther. And it's a really good camera. It's just, I've got to figure out what I'm doing wrong. So just go, I go both ways. And then I like to take and run it through my hand to get that dust off of it. And it will give it a worn look. You can't tell much on camera. I apologize for that. I wish you could see these things in real life. Sometimes I wish you couldn't see them. I'm glad you can't see them in real life because you can hide a lot of stuff with the camera. So just a comparison here. You can't tell a whole lot about it, to be honest with you. I can tell loads, but anyway, just it, it's, this is going to be a, like a factory fresh type car that's driven on the street. You know, it, it's just got a few miles on the street, but your tires definitely would not be shiny if you had a if you had a new vehicle. I mean, a uh, a vehicle that's been driven on the street at any, the tires wouldn't be shiny like that. So um, that's what I do. I use my little tool. 
works pretty good. I see other people use like a socket or something like that. But unfortunately, these are the hard rubber tires. These are like solid and they are very, very stiff. So to stick that, you'd have to find the perfect size socket. So I just, this, this works great for me. Just how I do it here. I usually use sandpaper, but I'm using this instead. Just like that. So I've got two nicely worn tires and two really shiny toy looking tires. What do you like? All right, next segment. All right, so one other quick, quick thing that I'm gonna show. I got, by the way, I got the, uh, Got the wheels and or the uh, tires or the wheels mounted in the tires they're looking good and the backs are ready to go on did have to adjust the tires those hard rubber tires I actually had to take and cut the inside of the tire so the rim could actually sit down in it it looked like the, the bead wasn't seated <clears throat> if you didn't do that so what I want to go and show you real quick is about black washing door your panel lines you know this is called panel line accent color and this is what it's really made for to wick inside these these places i've already done this one Let's see if you can tell there you can tell that there is a a black line down it well you, you know cars the gap isn't painted you know it, it's it's dark in there so to to add that realism try to use your panel ax your uh, panel line accent color i really knocked the brush off really good because you only want just a touch and then have a have a q-tip uh, ready to go because it will jump out sometimes you have to wipe that up so just take your this brush is so tiny so i mean they, they made it right and try to just follow the oh gosh how you like that what a what a great tutorial of how not to do it so just wipe it off if it gives you any trouble i got a bottle of alcohol here you can just take and put a, just a touch on your not too much you don't want to remove your paint with it but you can uh, clean it up just like that anyway really dry your brush off as much as possible and going down just let it wick right into the to the gap even across your fender all your panel lines they should you know they should sort of be shadowed so uh try to try to do that and it, it will it will make the model come to life another thing is these grills here these air intake grills this stuff is so thin it just wicks right in you can just touch it right over the top of them and it will wick right in and then you look like you know you've made shadow don't overdo it because you can't make a mess with it but try to stay consistent with the color all the way across and again you, you've you've achieved the effect of shadowing or not necessarily shadowing but you you've given it some depth it looks like there's something below it because it's dark now just like it would be on a real car but if it was just blue gloss blue everything's gloss blue you tend to lose that effect of realism and I, I think as modelers that's what we it's what we intend not that we always achieve, but we do intend, we intend on realism being our, our main goal outside of having fun, just having something to do. 
All right, so that's that. So your panel lines, you get those blacked out. The, this area is now blacked out. And just all the little panel lines there, anything that you think would have a shadow, touch a little bit of that in there and it will wick right in. If you don't like it, just be quick on the Q-tip and get it back out. But all right, we're about to wind this thing up. The exhaust, the exhaust looks good. Interior is ready to go in. Chrome's done. Windows are in. I'm going to finish black washing. Got to glue in the bumpers. Attach the headlights. Radiator. A few little odds and ends and this thing will be ready to go. So, um, I don't know how much more I'm going to show on the video, but probably after you see this, you're probably going to see the completed kit. So, see this? Stand by. Well, there it is. I think this thing turned out really, really nice, in my biased opinion. I even like the color. I think it turned out really nice, too. 66 Olds 442 by AMT. Man, such a nice kit. What was the date on that thing? Like 2004 or something like that. So it's not terribly, not a terribly old kit. But wow, this is really cool. A few little things that I would disagreed how they did it, but still fit good. Um, I don't know if they came in this blue. Probably not. It is a little bright for, you know, that error, but I think it looks great. I think it was a really cool car to build, and I can't wait to set it up on the shelf beside its cousins, the other Oldsmobiles. The more and more I build these Olds, the more and more I like them. It's like Oldsmobile was always like a grandma car to me, but... This is no grandma car. I mean, a grandma could have driven it, but yeah. Wow. So happy with it. Um, thanks for watching this video and following along as I build this thing. But yeah, this, this just turned out so, so nice. Um, obviously at the end of this video, I'll have a slideshow and, uh, take some still pictures of it. It's just such a nice car. That was just testers blue, just out of the little little testers bottles like this, just blue, and I cut it with the uh, lacquer thinner. And the engine is there, which looks really good, and I like an old old. Got the plug wires on it. Um, I don't really wire my engine bays, but I do put plug wires. So uh, most of the time they're on the shelf, like like these guys up here. And the hoods are all on them, so really even putting spark plug wires on them sometimes is a waste, but I like to do that. But yeah, man, it turned out great. I didn't even have to sand, I didn't even have to fit this hood. A lot of times your hoods will, won't fit right. You'll have to do some sanding and stuff. The, the hood even fit great. But yeah, guys, this thing was so nice. The undercarriage, give me a quick look, turned out really nice with the exhaust and, um, it's just a nice kit. Lots of bare metal foil. If you're going to do this one and, and foil it, you, you better buy a whole sheet because it takes quite a bit. All the windows there. Front window, back window, side windows. Then you've got over the, the bottom portion of the trunk there. You've got down the whole side of the car. You've got those emblem things there um, on the front hood. Over the headlights. Yeah, lots of chrome. But it's worth it all when you get it done. And uh, again, guys, thanks a lot for watching this. Um, this was so much fun. So much fun when they turn out like you expected. Sometimes, guys, I know we run into a brick wall as we're building. And it's uh, just want to quit. Sometimes it's just like we box them back up, put them on the shelf, and forget about it. But when they turn out nice, it is all worth it. So again, guys, thanks for watching this video. If you would give this thing a, a thumbs up, like this video, comment, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, don't forget to go over 
to our Facebook group, Model Car Videos Facebook group. You'll see this car on there. I might take some pictures also and put on there. Um, also, don't forget to go over to Hobby Nut Models, link in the description uh, for the Facebook and Hobby Nut. But don't, go over to Hobby Nut and check out Mark's inventory and uh, see if there's something on there you might want to take home today. So, with all that said, guys, thank you so much for watching. And uh, don't forget to stay around for the slideshow. You guys take care. See you on the next build. Bye.